Calais. In 2008, UK border agency teams found 20,000 people hiding in trucks headed for Britain. That's around 55 every day. It's estimated there are 1,500 immigrants living rough in Calais, many of whom are children. They make frequent attempts to creep aboard the freight trucks. Most live in the jungle, a forested area a few miles from the port. Others camp right outside the perimeter fence, waiting for the right moment to sneak onto a lorry. Today, Officer Maggie Woodard rushes to the berths, the place where lorries wait just before boarding the ferry. We've uh, just had a phone call from our colleagues down at the berths, so we're going to go down there, assist with the possibility of clandestines being found inside. Well, it's two. The clandestines have been found using CO2 probes that detect human breath. Yeah. Has that got the My colleagues who were working down here probed this lorry and they got a high reading. They opened it up and they found these two illegals on the side of the lorry. Um, we're just trying to get them out now. One chance. Not One chance. But tomorrow, more chance. We've spoken to the driver. He said his last stop was in Belgium. But we think he also mentioned the 50 minute stop just along the road for diesel, so it's more than likely they are from the jungle originally. Officer Bowley discovers they used a familiar method to break into the truck. Right, we've opened the trailer up, and it looks like we've got a tilt cord here that the driver could have used, in addition with the seal, would have sorted this whole problem out for him, wouldn't have been in there. The driver failed to tie down and lock the canvas sides of his freight. It looks like when the driver was stopped, someone's opened up the side for them, they've scooted in and then someone's done all the hooks back up again. Once they've got in, the driver's none the wiser. I would say 95% of the time, there's got to be someone that's sealed the vehicle back up after them. How old? What is it? Where do you want to go? England. Why England? England... Good. Good England. These clandestines aren't alone in thinking England holds the answer to their dreams. For them, it's the place to find work and start a new life. They'll keep on trying to defy the locking systems. On this occasion, the driver and his company were fined £1,300 for failing to secure the freight. Two gentlemen, maybe again tomorrow, they keep saying one chance for today. They'll know, they'll just keep trying. They'll willingly admit to us that they're going to keep trying, keep trying until we get to England. The areas where lorries are searched are called the lanes. Here, Officer Barrett has a high reading on his CO2 probe and has opened up the lorry. We could smell, as soon as we came in, the smell of clandestine. There's another clue clandestines are aboard, the distinct aroma of people who've been living rough. It's like a the bonfire sort of smell, <laughs> quite distinctive once you've sampled it a few times. Mark, what have we got? There's all different, ones claiming to be Syrian, Afghan and Iranian. This mixed international cargo is unusual as most clandestines travel in groups of fellow countrymen. It's the job more rewarding because that's what we're here to do, to prevent clandestines entering the UK. Just one at a time, Judith. Yeah. yeah. And this is what the job's about. Just as it's becoming another routine operation, one of the men becomes hostile. Stay, you guys. Hey, hey, snuff. Stay. No, you stay. Okay, camera goes. You stay, you stay here. Okay, you stay here. Sit down. Twelve. Might be best to stop filming, to be honest. They're just starting to get a bit agitated, so it might be best to take the camera away just for a second. The cameras back off to let the men calm down. For whatever reason, he decided that he didn't want to be on camera thinking, the, oh, next one. Um, yeah, the easiest way to get rid of the camera is to kick off and get everybody to react. And there's always one, you know, there's, there's generally a ringleader who will take charge, who's been here before and knows how it works. So they follow him. Get after you. No one chance. No one chance. Not today, tomorrow. One chance tomorrow. He's very smiley. Most clandestines are resigned to being caught and openly tell the officers how they got in. 
last one that just came out said that they entered through the side of the uh, vehicle and there's no tilt cord on it. Say again? If the driver had properly secured his freight, it could have stopped the clandestines from boarding. He was fined £1,200. Sometimes you do get some people, like clandestines, that they tend to get a bit irritable if they come through again and again and again and get bound all the time. But it's, it's only the few. I mean, most of them are, you know, try again tomorrow. At the outskirts of Heathrow is Colnbrook Immigration Removal Centre. It has the same security as a Category B prison. It holds 400 men in two sections. One section is long term. Many in here are foreign nationals who have already served a prison sentence. Once their sentence is over, they are brought here to wait for their paperwork to be completed so they can be sent home. This can be complicated and some have been here for years. Governments in some countries are reluctant to have people back with serious criminal records. There is also a short-term section. This holds illegal immigrants for up to a week. Many here have been caught by enforcement teams and are from countries that are easier to negotiate with for their return. Colnbrook's UK border agency office is where the removal papers are processed. Officer Raza is about to meet an Algerian man who has just completed a prison sentence. Are you very right? Yeah. Okay. He was convicted of, uh, of a crime in the UK. He was sentenced to 16 months for uh, robbery and attempted robbery. Um, so he's now obviously under immigration, being detained under immigration powers. Um, I'm just going to give you your deportation order. You will be required to leave and you're prohibited from entering the UK again as long as this order is in force. Okay, that's all for you. Okay. I've seen Farid before, so I mean, uh, I know what he's like. Uh, he tends to cooperate fairly well with immigration because he wants to go back to Algeria as soon as possible anyway. Hello, lads, if you just take a seat on the far side, thank you. Officer Chima is about to see an illegal immigrant from Kosovo. The man was sent here after being arrested in a late night brawl. The police discovered he was here illegally and handed him to immigration. All right, Mr. Lula, my name is Mr. Chima. I work here for the Home Office. Uh, do you understand why you're being detained here? Well, somehow, yes. OK. Just to keep it brief, um, as you know, you were detained as someone who's to be removed from the UK. You have a flight back to Kosovo, Albania, on the 14th of May, which is next Thursday. Oh, yeah. That's your flight itinerary there. That is your factual summary, giving you a history of your case and also who's in charge of your case. So if you let your solicitor know what's happened, you can do so. I don't have a nothing. OK. Um, there is a list of duty solicitors available here for you. You can speak to the no, officer. I just want to go back. OK, on. that's fine. The street fighter won't have long to wait. He'll be sent home Decided next week this. on a specially chartered flight. Thank you very much. Please. Thank you. Officer Chima will speak to another Kosovan he wants to put on the same flight. Mr. Jusufi uh, had, uh, had been here since 1998, so he's been here a long time. Um, and we're going to serve removal documents on him. Um, he, he came here claiming asylum also. His asylum claim was dismissed. In that time, he's been working. He arrived in 1998 and claimed asylum. Mr. Jusufi, you take a seat on the far side, thank you. Thank you very much. Six years later, his application was refused. Yes, please. He absconded but was arrested in an enforcement raid at a pizza restaurant in April 2009. Do you understand why you're being detained? Yes, I do. OK, just to make it brief, uh, you have a removal set back to Kosovo for the 14th of May, which is next Thursday. That's your flight itinerary for you there. Uh, this is also for you, just a case history of, of your time you arrived to the time of your yeah. detention. Quite a long time. Yeah. <laughs> He's settled in Britain and feels the country owes him a debt. Because I've been working here with my papers for almost more than 10 years. Yeah? Right. And I've been paying tax right, for this country. Right. I want all my taxes back here. Yeah? Right. Because I'm going gonna, gonna to be able to move from England, mm -hmm. I want all my taxes back. Mm -hmm. I was working in my name, mm -hmm. I didn't work in the other names, so mm -hmm. all the time in my name. Mm -hmm. And I've got a house in England as well. I got flat here. Right. Well, I'll suggest. So that's why. And I got my fiance here. I didn't get any, anything think, from, from government, any income. So I, 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 appreciate, I appreciate what you're saying, Mr. Jusufi. However, 
it isn't going to change that you will be removed at this point. Yeah, so all I can say is, is you should speak to your legal representative and he'll be able to advise you on that. <laughs> when the guy was talking about tax, we've had a few of those uh, questions before. It's something that uh, um, we, don't try, we don't get involved in. Um, we'll tell them to take legal advice on it. But technically speaking, they've been here illegally, so they can't get, can't get their, their, their tax back date in any way. The two Kosovan prisoners will join 24 other Kosovans and Albanians on the flight chartered by UK border agency. This is a, a regular thing that the UK border agency do, uh, these charter flights that have been planned and they happen on a, on a fortnightly or on a monthly basis to remove, uh, specifically remove Kosovan and Albanian nationals back to uh, that part of Europe. It's one of 70 flights a year used for removing illegal immigrants. In 2008, over 1,500 were sent home this way. Many of those in Colnbrook were picked up by enforcement teams like this one. Officer Shane Healy is planning a raid on a Chinese takeaway. We're going to the Intelligence suggests that possible immigration offenders are working from this address and previous visits to this kind of establishment have led to the arrests of failed asylum seekers and immigration offenders. So we'll go straight away. In 2008, enforcement teams carried out 13,000 raids, resulting in over 10,000 arrests. The target today is a takeaway serving the locals of the well-heeled area of West Hampstead. We're here. Right, let's go. Yeah. Immigration service, you want to come inside for us? It's immigration service. Can you all want to come around this area for me? Put down what you're doing. Has that been clear downstairs? Yeah. Hi, right, from the immigration service. OK, we're just here doing checks on people today. Actually, have a seat, yeah? You're right. We're um, immigration officers. There are nine employees. Officers check their immigration status. Have you got a passport? Yeah. What, what type of passport have you got? You carry it about with you? Yeah. Ah, that's probably fine. The lady's produced her passport to me. Um, it's a valid passport. It's got a valid uh, student visa in here. So she's got uh, leave to remain in the UK. Where, where's your passport? Yeah, he's fine. Yeah, he's, he's, uh, okay. he's told me who he is. He's told me his story and stuff. Checked on our computer database, verified it from a copy of his passport. It's all fine. He's a um, British citizen. The workers prove they are allowed to work in Britain, except for one. He applied for asylum, but was turned down. Okay, those you have got. All right, OK. He sought an application to remain here on the basis of his nationality and uh, problems back home. Uh, that application has been looked at and been, it's been refused. He was asked, as a result of him being illegally in this country, to sign on at our office, which he's failed to do since 2004. Well, listen, you're under arrest. You don't have to say anything. But my harm defence, if you do not mention when questioning something which you later rely on in court. The man is a failed asylum seeker hiding from the immigration authorities. Officers will now take the man to his home address to find his passport so they can remove him from the country. Without it, they will have to ask for emergency travel documents from the Chinese government, and they could face difficulties convincing them he's from their country. The gentleman that then is arrested got his address, so we are going to go there and, and search for a document. Without a document, the likelihood of removing him is, is, is very unlikely, so we are going to go and search for a passport now. Heathrow, Terminal 3. It carries over 30,000 passengers every day. That's over 10 million a year. Today at Passport Control is immigration officer Sheetal Patel. Hi there. Travelling alone? Yeah. She's about to check a woman who's just arrived from South Africa. I'm just going to ask you a few questions about your stay here, yeah? Mm -hmm. How long are you going to be here? Three months. Three months. So immediately today, where will you be going? Um, I've got one thing to me up from the airport, so I will be staying with you or I will be staying with my friends or from South Africa. Okay. So your friend that's picking you up, is he just just a friend? Yeah. Okay. Okay, Miss Thomas, I have got some inquiries to make, okay? So uh, just need to make just need to take this. Take a seat for me. You'll be here with us until I finish conducting those inquiries, okay? okay. Matt? Got a referral for you. Okay, we've got a South African female. 
She's just coming in. She says she wants to come in for three months, but she's just finished a two-year working holiday. And she's only been away from the country for a month. She says she'll be going to Scotland, Ireland, visit other um, South African friends that she has here. So, so in two years here, she just didn't get around to seeing Scotland and Wales. And Ireland and Wales, yeah. Doesn't hang together. Mm. The idea of a working holiday is that you have a holiday and you do a bit of incidental work. Exactly. And that in two years, you should, you know, you pretty much be able to see what you need to see. Yeah. So then to come back for another holiday on top of that makes me think that there's something here yeah. that's more important than yeah. coming back there. A two-year working holiday visa allows one year of work and one year of holiday. Come with me this way. The South African woman has already had one of these visas, and now she's back just one month later. Yeah? Officer Patel wants to find out if the friend waiting to pick up the passenger is just a friend. But it seems being stopped by immigration is all too much for her. I know you're upset, but it's just, you know, I just have to... I feel alone now, and... Do you want to give her a call? Do you want me to no, give? She's at work now. I okay. just, I just want to go home. I, I don't even want to be here. Just grab your bags. Although the passenger appears to have given up the fight, Officer Patel investigates further to assess her status. First, she calls the passenger's friend waiting in arrivals. Hi, Tom. My name is Sheetal. I'm an immigration officer at Heathrow Airport. Hi there. Are you meeting anyone today? Uh, okay, just to let you know, she ha she's currently being held with immigration. We do have some f further inquiries that we need to conduct. Is it all right if I have a quick chat with you? And how is it that you know her? You just know through friends. Are you just friends or are you in a relationship? You're in a relationship, thank you. Okay then, thank you. Bye-bye. So it turns out that the gentleman downstairs, Tom, is the passenger's boyfriend. And when I asked the passenger if it's a boyfriend or a friend, she stated that he is just a friend. To have a boyfriend in the UK creates a stronger tie than just to have friends in the UK. So it gives her that extra thing to want to come back for. So um, not sure why she would have said on the desk that it's, it's not a boyfriend, but that's what we need to find out. The passenger has lied about who was picking her up. With a boyfriend here, Officer Patel suspects a short visit might turn into something more permanent. As soon as this, the deception starts, that's when our alarm bells start ringing. And, you know, it's just that, have you got more to hide? Is there more to this than, than you're letting on? Previous payslip from when she was here on her working holiday. Officer Patel and her boss, Matt Dyson, look for other clues to find out why she wants to come to the UK. They discover a payslip. £500 fortnightly, that's not bad. Yeah. That's sure she's worked full time for that whole year. Okay. So that's not good. So we just need to find out if she worked full time for the other year as well. Where is she? Where is she? Hmm. Her working holiday visa would have allowed her to work 12 months of her two year stay. In this case, what we've got so far is there's a pay slip there which appears to indicate, unless she was earning an enormous amount for a little bit of work, that she probably worked the whole of uh, the last tax year, the one that we've just come out, completed. Um, now, that means she's done all her work, basically, in that period. Now, I, do we really believe that in the first year she was here, she did nothing at all? Well, that's unlikely, because let's be honest, if you're a working holiday maker on a two-year working holiday, you're not going to sit around and not work for a whole year and then just do it at the end, because, you know, your financial constraints are the same at the beginning as they are at the end, pretty much. Good morning, my name is Sheetal. I'm an immigration officer at Heathrow Airport. Officer Patel calls the restaurant where the passenger has been working. So she started 25th of June 2007 and departed 26th of Feb, did you say? 2009, OK. The manager says the woman worked over 20 months at the restaurant, eight more than her visa allowed. It just goes to show that she had a disregard for the restrictions that was put on her. She, when you do get your working holiday, you are told it's one year's holiday, one year's work, and she's abused that. Once you've used something once, you know, you can't be trusted that you're not going to do it again, that's the thing. I've just made a phone call and they tell me that you were employed from the 25th of June 2007 to the 26th of Feb 2009. Okay. Yeah? So that's 20 months. Okay. Yeah? Do you understand what that means? No. Right. When you were given your working holiday visa, 
You were told how long you can work for. Yeah. And how long were you told? A year. Okay. So we've now found out that in actual, in fact, you worked for over that time, which means that you breached the restrictions given to you on your working holiday. So after speaking to Tom, yeah, he's told me that, uh, like I asked you at the desk, are you in a relationship or is he just your friend? And you told me he's your friend. But when I asked him, he says he's in a relationship with you. So, who's right, who's wrong? I mean, you, you want to call it a relationship, you know? Okay, what, what do you call it? <laughs> a thing. Okay, so you, guys have, been, friends so you guys have been together um, as friends, and now you're coming back to see him? Not necessarily him, but okay. he knows that. Okay. After speaking to him, he says that you guys are in a relationship. Why would he say that? Because he says he's actually discussed plans with you and stuff. I don't know. I don't know. The passenger is trying to make light of her relationship. For the chief, it doesn't wash. You can have a certain amount of sympathy when someone's dreams are not going to go or come to fruition this week. Mm -hmm. But, you know, she has told lies. Yeah. You know. You know, she's done it once, how, we don't know if she's going to do it again. Exactly. Yeah. No, she can go home first, we'll fight, please. Still the edge. Come on, then. I'll tell you what's happening, right? You have been, we've made the decision, and you've been refused entry today. Just let me stay one week, and then just let me, the, after one week, I swear on my mother's life, I will go. Your f removal flight is this evening, OK? Your removal flight is tonight at 8.30. At this moment, you, ha you, you are inadmissible to the UK. Therefore, we can't let you go anywhere. So, unfortunately, you have to stay with us in detention <laughs> until, until your flight. Well, as far as taking you anywhere and putting you anywhere else, I can't do that, I'm afraid. It doesn't stop you from coming back. You can still come back. You just I don't need want, to... I, will, I, do, I would never want to come That's back fine. here. That's fine. Never. That's for you. The passenger was put on a flight to South Africa later that evening. The London enforcement team raided a Chinese takeaway and arrested a failed asylum seeker found working there. The team want his passport so they can remove him from the country. They've driven him back to his house to pick it up. Let's go. Just so everyone's aware, there's children on the premises. It appears there is a family living there. The man failed to tell the officers he was married with children. Excuse me. That's your wife, yeah? Yeah. Upstairs, officers are met with another surprise. Anyone speak English? A tiny room with six beds and four men about to eat dinner. And with some nationalities, you find an awful lot of people to one room. Um, we've done a visit well, years back now, but we found 47 Chinese in one, one three-bedroom house. The reason why we're here, OK, we want your passport. Your passport? Uh, it's ID, yes. ID? Where? where? It's yeah, go on, baby. Fans, it? it's oh, baby. Oh, you got baby as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, OK, one in the oven. The man's wife is pregnant with a second child. Oh, very nice. Hey, sorry, sorry. No, 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 don't you do that if you're pregnant. You shouldn't be picking up boxes if you're pregnant. Okay. All, right. All right. Come on, sit down. No, just sit down. Okay, thank you. Thank Come on, sit down. Sorry. Anyone in the house speak English? Anyone in the house? You speak. You speak a little bit of English, yeah, don't you? Yeah. Do you understand? No, no, you understand. No, no, You've been here a long phone. time. You do understand a little okay, bit. Thank you. Listen, listen to. Listen. Right. Listen to the officer. Okay. You've been here since. You've been here. You've been here ten years. You have to. You understand a little bit of English, okay? Hello? Yeah, hi. Hello. Home office checks reveal his wife is also a failed hiya. asylum seeker. To she keeps to her bail conditions by reporting regularly, but her husband has not reported in years. No problem. They've both been asked to sign at the same office. Uh, she was only once a month and she's signing on. She's heavily pregnant, still makes it. He's able and uh, doesn't. He has not told us about his wife and kids. You know, these are all relevant to uh, us making a fair decision. You know, when was he going to tell us? When he was getting on a plane? Absolutely ridiculous. Makes a mockery of the whole system. The husband and wife claim they don't have passports. The enforcement team have heard this before. One part of the job I hate is searching. I enjoy it. Do you? Yeah. Oh. 
back upstairs, it's a tight squeeze as officers check home office records on the four men. We've got uh, four Chinese gentlemen uh, in this bedroom. Uh, they've produced us with um, their art cards, which is asylum registration cards. Um, we're going to check on our system and see what uh, state their applications are in and uh, go from there. The discovery of asylum registration cards should mean the Home Office will have details on file. Hello, Vicky. Uh, we're in a house full of Chinese. Could you do some uh, checks, please? The three men claimed asylum on entry into Britain. They were given temporary release, and by the time their asylum claims were refused, they had all absconded. The fourth man entered Britain on the back of a lorry. Could you explain to him um, he's now under arrest as someone liable to be detained? They are arrested to be questioned further and have their fingerprints taken. The team cannot find the passports to help remove the family from the country. It could take months to sort out emergency travel documents. Right, we're going to release you, OK? Check it out. Check it out. That's not because you've been a good person. It's because it's only because you've got a wife, a pregnant wife and child here. Yeah, right? But yeah. it's important that you come in and sign on with your wife. He's got to you know, act responsibly now for his family and start signing on with his wife every month. The man and his wife are currently reporting as instructed. That's why I'm, 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 I'm on a guard, man. The four men arrested upstairs were later released on condition they appear every two weeks at a reporting centre. They reported once before absconding again. At a location near Gatwick, a private security firm is gearing up for a big operation. While most of Britain sleeps, Team leader Alan Mackay briefs his 68 custody officers on Operation Aardvark. Hi, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome to Operation Aardvark 355. And we'll be taking, uh, returning 26 detainees to either Albania or Kosovo. Uh, we have uh, three coaches going to two to Colnbrook and one to uh, Brookhouse, and then we have a van going up to Yarlswood. Colnbrook Immigration Removal Centre. Officers wake the detainees for an early morning flight. Good morning, Mr. Hassa. Hello. You know what's happening today? I'm down. Hello. 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 Quick search. I was waiting for, because I waited for court. Mr. Lulaj, yes. good morning. You know what's happening, don't you? Excellent. I can't wait. Excellent. I want to go home now. The Kosovan man arrested in a street fight has shaved his head for the occasion. The coaches arrive carrying the custody officers. Our job primarily is to take them from the custody of the uh, immigration removal centre. They'll then be taken into our custody. Then they're, they're brought out of the uh, out of the centre and onto the coaches for, for transportation. It's fair to say that the vast majority of these guys are uh, they've had fair warning that they will be removed from the from the country. They've made their arrangements. The majority of them are happy to go. Uh, occasionally, we we may get somebody that's uh, not quite so cooperative, but you know we try our best. They will pick up illegal immigrants from two other removal centres and will rendezvous at the airport at 8 a.m. Most of the detainees have been caught working illegally, but some have served time in prison for violent offences. Yeah, there's, there's a good rapport between the staff and those in our custody, and um, you know, we like to keep it that way. We like to make sure that we build up a relationship. A bit of sense of humour and. Uh, talk about football, uh, find something in common. Yeah. Today, UK border agency have chartered an entire plane to deport them. OK, they're coming on. This is where the staff come into their own, really, and they start to uh, ease tensions and de-escalate any problems that they may see arising. Uh, it, you know, nobody's going to be removed forcibly um, unless uh, you know, they resist the removal. 
Just as the last few take their seats, there is a problem with a woman who doesn't want to board. The flight can't leave without her. She's pretty volatile. Uh, let the girls deal with it. I want you guys to, to uh, we want to cordon uh, around the van, yeah? Let the girls deal with it, please. All right, guys. We've got a, a female detainee that's uh, reluctant to get on the aircraft. Um, the girls are talking to her now. We're trying to persuade her that, um, you know, the best option really is to go along with us. Um, unfortunately, uh, it, it may be that um, we may have to offer some, uh, some more formal help to get her on the aircraft. It's a delicate situation for the team already on board. They don't want to unnerve any of the other passengers. She's afraid of flying. She's scared of being on an airplane. The medic will give her some tablets to calm her down. That's all it is. She's an elderly lady and she's scared. The illegal immigrants are escorted back home by 56 custody officers. Four Kosovans will go to Pristina and the rest to Tirana in Albania. When the officers return, they will need to start preparing for the next chartered flight to a different destination in a few days' time. Passport control, Heathrow, Terminal 3. A passenger is taken to have his bag searched. Officer Hassler wants to know why he has come to the UK. I've just been handed this case. It's a returning student uh, on a Pakistani uh, passport. Um, the issue we've got is that he, he's, uh, he's known to us for having a uh, UK residence permit refused. The residence permit was an international graduate scheme work permit, also known as an IGS. It was refused because his education certificates were from a UK college listed as bogus. What he's then done, he's then reapplied for a new student uh, residence permit. So the question is, we've got somebody who was studying, who in fact wants to work here, was refused a work permit, but has now then gone and reapplied as a student visa, which is strange to say the least. The man has just four days left on his original student visa. If he's allowed in, he can immediately apply for a new IGS work permit. The application process will give him up to three months extra time in the UK, much longer than the four days left on his current visa, even if the application is refused. OK, we're just going to take you to another area now, OK? Where we, I need to do your fingerprints uh -huh. and also need to take a, a picture of you as well, yeah? yeah? So what I'm going to explain to you, right, you've been held up at the moment. There's insufficient reliable information for me to decide whether to grant you entry, OK? And at the moment, you've given unsatisfactory answers to the questions given by the original officer on the control, OK? OK. What other documentation have you got here that I can have a look at whilst we're here? Most foreign travellers on visas bring with them a for? few supporting documents. This man has brought hundreds. So you refused? That was the uh, work permit, basically. IGS, yeah? IGS, it is. So, I mean, this is an awful lot of documentation. Uh, but you do tend to find certain nationalities will carry their documentation with them. Like I say, this is a, a great deal. Um, so it just makes my job a little bit harder to sift through it all and uh, find what's relevant and, and what's not. I'll tell you what, he's more organised than I am. Among the documents are wage slips from William Hill, Ladbrokes and Asda. A foreign student in Britain can work a maximum of 20 hours a week. On the control, he did tell the officer that he was working at Asda. Um, so we need to clarify... Um, how long he's been working for us there because clearly if he's working one place and then working two places then the accumulative hours would be in excess of those, those 20. He also finds letters from several colleges in Britain all claiming he is studying with them. Officer Hassler wants to know how he can be in all these places at once. So we're going to go and interview and we're just going to ask him about his student, his time as a student and see what he says because We've got colleges overlapping, massive colleges. You know, we've got three or four colleges at what, any one time that he's supposed to be studying at. So we'll go in there and we'll have a chat and see what he comes up with and we'll see if we can, if you can discuss his, his course content. OK, what I'd let you do, just come in here, please, and sit down there, all right? Are you fitting well to be interviewed? I'll, I'll try my best. 
No, no, I don't want you trying your best. I want you to tell me, are you fit and well to be interviewed? Because I want to ask you some questions. And what I don't want you five or ten minutes saying, oh, I can't answer that because I'm not well. Are you fit and well to be interviewed? I mean, have I got any option? Of course you've got an option. I'm asking you a question. Are you fit and well to be interviewed? If you don't feel you're well enough to be interviewed, you tell me and I'll refer you back to the doctor. I think I'm fine. You think you're fine? The interviewers got off to an uncomfortable start and I the real questions haven't even my begun. Case and my final... A man has arrived from Pakistan with just four days left on his student visa. Officer Hassler has questions about the certificates he submitted for a work permit and the hundreds of documents found in his hand luggage. He has at least two jobs and is studying at a number of colleges. Why have you come to the UK? Today. Yeah, correct. To study. Okay, and where? LSMS. Which is? London School of Management Sciences. How long have you studied there? Almost five years. So. Since you've, your arrival then, you've effectively been studying all your time at London School of Management School Science. Management Sciences. Can you tell me why I have a letter from Empire College dated November 2004 saying that you were a full-time student doing a Bachelor of Science in Physics? So why would they be issuing you a letter if you've never studied there? No, basically I didn't inform them that I left the college. Why would you ask for this letter if you had no intention to be studying there? And please start telling me the truth, because at the yeah. moment you're not, and I can tell you're not. No, that's what I'm telling you, sir. That's what, it's, what you're telling me. I was, I was still enrolled in then college, but I wasn't... How can you possibly be enrolled in a college that you've never attended? It's basically, sir, it's a misunderstanding, because it wasn't my fault. All I want to say, I don't want to waste your time. Listen, I'm getting paid to do this, so you're not wasting my time. I'm going to get to the bottom of this. All I want to say, sir, I'm studying at whatever I have told you under... I'm under pressure or I'm under... I'm Listen, confused. you're not under pressure because I give you ample opportunity at the beginning of this interview and you chose to say that you were fitting well and I did say what I don't want you to do is start saying, oh well, you know, I'm a bit confused because your English is fine, it, it is more than acceptable for me to understand you and I know that you can understand me. All I want to confess is I have done nothing wrong in your country. Okay, right, let me be the judge if you do nothing wrong, okay? What did you apply for in um, June of last year? IGS. And what happened to that? It was refused. What letters did you submit? What letters and certificates did you submit? I did give them the, uh, the result sheets. The Postgraduate Diploma in Business Administration. From where? From Westminster College of Computing. Did you study at Westminster College of Computing? No, sir. Then how did you get all these certificates? You are best to just answer the truth, okay? Because I know what the truth is, and it's better that you corroborate it. So just answer me the question. How did you get these documents? A person helped me to make these documents. So they are false documents? Yeah, but I brilliant. Sorry? Yeah. Yes. Were you working? Yes, I was. Where were you working? Esther. What hours do you work there? I was 20 hours there. And what about William Hill? I did work in William Hill as well. So, we started end of December 2006, beginning of 2007 with Asda, okay? And you started William Hill the same time, okay? And you've worked 20 hours a week for Asda, yeah? And you've worked 20 hours a week for William Hill, yeah? So, how many hours in total did you work? Roughly 40 hours. And you still work for Asda and William Hill, yes? So all I want to say is... I'm not breaking any law or anything, or whoa, 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 not whoa. harming... Listen, anyone. just a sec, just a sec. You say you're not breaking a law, right? But what do you think immigration law is? It's not one rule for one person, one rule for another. You are breaking the law. As a student, Okay, 
You're not allowed to work more than 20 hours a week. You're working 40 hours a week. As a student, you're not supposed to pay for fraudulent documents to submit to the UK Home Office to then try and get a work permit to live in the UK. So you tell me where you've not broken the law. Sir, I didn't mean to break the law. It was just my fault. It was my mistake, sir. It's hard that is. Okay. Do you need anything to eat? Food? You okay? All right. <coughs> From the very beginning, I mean, you could tell that he was struggling to sort of keep up with what was going on with regard to what his history was or what his purported history was. Um, and, and we've established that he's gone and purchased these documents that he then submitted to the Home Office attempting to get a work permit. Um, so, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, it's a, it's a clear refusal. Okay, Mr. Bajwan. Right, I need to explain to you that you're going to be refused entry into the United Kingdom, okay? If I go just back and straight away if I apply again, if I apply again straight away, I'm asking for advice. If you're asking my honest opinion, if you went back to uh, Pakistan and then you said to, uh, next week you applied for a student visa, I would say it's very highly unlikely that you would be issued with a student visa. I mean, my, after, my personal opinion. After a month or so. Okay, you've got the man has worked right. double the hours permitted for a student and he's submitted false documents to try and get a visa. Yet he still hopes he can come back soon. This is a, a massive problem we have now with students. Um, it's, it's what takes up the day, is returning students who are ultimately bogus students. They get the residence permit or they get the entry claims from the country of origin. They come to the UK, um, don't ever study get fraudulent documents to show that they have been or claimed to have been studying and then it just perpetuates itself. They get their residence permits, they get their extensions um, and it's all built on a lie.